What is up, all you gamers? Welcome back to the weekly Esports Rewind podcast. I hope you guys all enjoy. As per usual, we're going to read comments first. Dude, last week we broke the record Finally. for most comments ever on a podcast. Appreciate so, it. Uh, we really do want to thank all of you guys who leave comments. It does make our day. And this podcast is one of the more fun segments we have throughout the week to talk at length about some great topics. And our boy, because last podcast we talked about him, JHB, our son, he said, good video, dad. Not our son. It's Jake's son. My nephew. Nephew. I was yeah, yeah. <laughs> your uncle. <laughs> so thank you, JHB. And there were so many comments. I can't read them all, though. Uh, we had Savage, and I'm not going to read the rest of your name because I don't know how to say it, uh, says, these videos are great for someone like me. I want to keep up with what is going on in the community, but I don't have enough time to watch everything because I'm a boomer. Thanks for making it easy, my dudes. Heck yes. I mean, we love that kind of audience, and we love preparing this information and all this uh, stuff for you because we really enjoy talking about it. Are you ready? Absolutely. Let's get on into it. Hope you all enjoy. And yes, we got to talk about it. Probably the biggest news this past week is rumors as Call of Duty Vanguard, the newest release, is slowly, slowly being teased, set to be teased at Call of Duty Champs. We got a lot of stories around Call of Duty this week in Activision Blizzard, but a big one, that being teased, is a Warzone and a Call of Duty anti-cheat apparently coming with the next title. Do you believe it's actually going to happen? No, liar. <laughs> You're lying to me. <laughs> You're lying to all of us. I definitely don't. And it's hard when you see... Like data miners are just one. Really quickly, I do. So we're just, we're kind of bouncing off each other. Right. <laughs> it's just interesting when you see data miners pull all this stuff about Vanguard and you're like, okay, well, that looks pretty legit. And then they're all saying very confidently, we are getting anti cheat. And you have to, I just, everyone, I said this in my video, everyone in that Warzone community has got to be a pessimist at this point of, yeah. is it really coming? And if it does, is it going to work? And for me, because, of course, all the rumors out there saying this has been in the works for quite some time, which does make a lot of sense. You know, I'm not in the background of uh, the ones creating the anti-cheat, but you got to wonder, why would you not maybe... They haven't really hinted at this Say something. being a thing. And so, yes, I think it's okay to be pessimistic because of how the game has been run. There have been countless issues. If you guys are an actual player of the game or if you watch your favorite streamers, every single week you got a different kind of hack, a different kind of cheat, a different in-game issue, a glitch, whatever it might be, and it just never goes away. By the way, at the point of us recording, there are still hackers and cheaters running rampant, as expected. And so, yeah, I, I want to know, though, what was the thing that crossed the line? What was the moment where they were like, hey, we do need an anti-cheat. We should start working on that. Well, like you said, hackers and cheaters are running rampant. Right now, Symphony's playing, so we know it's still active. <laughs> They're allowing hackers to live stream on Twitch. <laughs> but speaking of, I think the last draw, which a lot of people agree, was probably so many people switching over. And we saw all the biggest names say, you know what? We're going to take a break and go to Apex. I'm not playing Warzone, so... <laughs> Be all that you can be over on the war zone side of tyranny. What are you, um, what's going to be on your main channel today? Anything? Yeah, then I'm quitting Call of Duty. <laughs> and then suddenly, oh, hey guys, there might be anti-cheat on the way, which is a little convenient. That's, that's, that's <laughs> I'm glad we agree. That's why I'm pessimistic because the rumors say this has been worked on for like a year or more. Right. But it seems oddly convenient that all of a sudden Apex is taking back over and you actually have big streamers leaving and then Halo is now coming as well. And then they're like, yeah, by the way, <laughs> we're being it's, it's being worked on. A lot of people were saying that, hey, maybe releasing information about it before would have hindered the process mm -hmm. or let those cheaters and hackers know that something was coming. So a little bit of a bait and switch of, oh, yeah, Warzone's never going to do anything. And it gets to that point. And then suddenly, oh, we've been developing this for a year. But the big question is, is this, you know, too little too late? Yes. I mean, that is the giant lingering question. I think you'll have plenty of people who want to go back. But it's also, I mean, it's great timing for a new Call of Duty title because, you know, with a new hopefully surgence of everyone gets baited into paying 60 bucks all over again. Right. And along with Warzone, I think it is good timing, but also it's pretty bad timing with the release of Halo, the rise of Apex, who knows other battle royales might take off as well. And you already have people who have committed to making the Apex or other games switch. Yeah. And so I'm sure they would have liked it to be earlier, but I mean, all of this coming around the same cycle of a new, of an old game into a new game. Did they, did they, just hold, waiting. Hold like, off. Like, we'll do it for the next call. Yeah, just, just develop it for the next one, which may be because it was too difficult to maybe like backwards engineer. I don't know anything. The game. These Cold are War, hard words. Right. <laughs> like, we, like, we don't know these. And so maybe it was just easier to say, hey, OK, we'll just develop. We see all these problems. Develop 
uh, incredible one for the next game and for the next Warzone cycle. And that way it'll be fully ready for the next Call yeah. of Duty and, of course, to be integrated into Warzone. And then very lastly, to kind of get these Warzone topics out of the way, is uh, brought to us by NetBet. They were doing a study and released the numbers on their website of the daily revenue of a game like Call of Duty Modern Warfare, but mostly Warzone being a whopping $5.2 million per day, which is pretty crazy. They could afford, yeah, like six days, they could afford what mixer paid ninja that's how much i make every day so i mean yeah we just do what we love <laughs> <laughs> and make millions that is incredible which i feel like that number probably just makes people even more angry yep. that things aren't <laughs> developed is sooner yeah i was kind of unfortunate timing because our original video was going to be warzone makes 5.2 million per day with no anti-cheat right but now we can't really say that <laughs> well we can because we're not sure it's actually going to come out if it does will it work is now the next question what all you call of duty fans think Sadly, the Activision Blizzard stuff does continue. It has been a wild week, and if you guys were here last week or the week before that, you know that we have updates for all of you, and it unfortunately, yet again, has gotten very serious. Uh, please follow all the videos you've released so many on the countless allegations, the walkouts, the, the mishaps, the executives uh, taking a step back, blocking people on Twitter, which all led to a culmination of, of this week, which has been sponsors backing out and uh, some further updates, which I know you've got a long lengthy list about. Yeah, so I'm going to read about it real quick. <laughs> so we've seen one of the biggest ones was the shareholders firing back and deciding, hey, we're, we already knew they're launching their own lawsuit, but then they also launched their own set of demands through a letter, which included the same demand that the employees included of, hey, Wilmer Hale, not going to cut it. The mm -hmm. lawsuit that is known for protecting the rich is not the one that we want to do your internal review, which is kind of a no brainer. I would say they probably should have thought that one through first. And so getting the shareholders involved, I think is huge from a lawsuit point of view, as well as making demands, because then you have the people who are investing in your company, as we all know, that company listens to money. So they will hopefully listen to that. We also saw, like you said, all the sponsors pull out of the Overwatch League, which has started wild rumors of the Overwatch League potentially taking a break, which was shut down by the VP of the Overwatch League at Blizzard. But like you never know when rumors like that come out. And then lastly, I'll let you choose what you want to talk I about. <laughs> uh, then lastly, another big one is what we heard about today of Astro, well, as of recording today, Astro potentially just disappearing from I, the CDO. I love how you can see the anticipation. You're like, I know. <laughs> <"What?"> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's obviously huge issues when it comes time for the esports side of things and what a lot of you probably saw for the franchise leagues. When you have big sponsors pulling out, it creates a wide, wide ruckus. T-Mobile was amongst, uh, I believe, the first Coca-Cola. Kellogg had their brands, Pringles and Cheez-It. And now we have Astro. And I think I might be missing one in there that have either taken a step back completely or at least are taking a step back to reassess their future with mainly the Overwatch League, but now we're also seeing T-Mobile and, like you said, Astro for the Call of Duty League. Astro, by the way, primary sponsor for the MVPs, the listen-ins, uh, other, other mentions as well that Astro is widely on the broadcast. Right. So for them to back out, by the way, a week or so out, a short time out from Call of Duty champs is a pretty big freaking deal. Yeah. And it, like you said... I know there's so much to go off here because you also said the potential hiatus that Overwatch League might go on in between Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 because some people maybe want to play the next season on a brand new Overwatch, which has been very heavily delayed. So it really, really drives a lot of questions. Like, what are the future of these franchise leagues, specifically those underneath Activision Blizzard? And I don't think either you or me saw, I mean, the the like ripples of the first... Right time we talked about this to getting to here it's so so bad we were talking about it earlier in the office of man this could be awful for esports as a whole honestly because seeing two massive esports like the call of duty league and overwatch league go down the drain is going to have a lot of organizations looking around like well what do we do at this point if we were hoping to or we currently do compete in call of duty we have a call of duty roster or we have overwatch rosters or all these players who are still on the rosters but maybe won't be anymore where do you go in this direction i think a lot of orgs are going to have to reevaluate what they're investing in who they're hiring or they're going to take a step back for a while and you're left feeling the worst for the players because oh, yeah. especially when it comes for overwatch i would say they're in a more uh, damning position right now than call of duty league as to where it stands currently 
I mean, you are making that switch not only with the number of players that you play your game with, but a game entirely from one to Overwatch 2 whenever it does come out. And with these organizations who eventually, I, I imagine down the line, a big asset to have is the possibility of recouping what you've invested. Yeah. If both these leagues fall, what happens then? Do we expect Activ Activision Blizzard to just pay the teams back saying, hey, because it failed, that was kind of our fault. I mean, t in order to survive financially, we could be seen, and this is a stretch maybe, but if if the leagues fail on a basis that started with Activision Blizzard wrongdoings, if you're a team, would you sue right. the leagues to say, we want our money back? Like this league failed, yes, in part to the handling of the game, but also because you guys had a lot of bad stuff going on. Now that's a big stretch. As of right now, I'm just left feeling bad for a lot of Overwatch players and what they're gonna do. That's gotta be super concerning news. And with these sponsors backing out, what are the futures of these leagues? Or do you even, are you, is anyone ever gonna be willing to pay $25 million for a spot? Do you ruin the whole model with this kind of thing? Yeah, because if someone wants to get into it, say maybe some people are negotiating spots with other people, are you, do you now say, okay, well, that's not worth 25 million anymore. Uh, even though you paid for that, that's not what I'm going to be willing to pay because of this, this, and this going on with the company. And so, I mean, I really don't know. I would assume that if those leagues did fail, we would probably have some resurgence of a less professional sort of scene. Maybe players would come together and make their own coalition and get sponsors and say, hey, we're not Activision Blizzard, but we're still pro players. Anyone want to sponsor us? Like, we don't have anything to do with the company. It's also a pandemic. So it's like, yeah. how many online events can you can you watch? Are, to, right. are TOs going to want to touch Overwatch or Call of Duty? I imagine some will, but you throw the pandemic on top of everything and acquiring all of those sponsors and, of course, putting it all together on a frequent basis. Yeah. Takes a lot. I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I would definitely love to see the return of those kind of events. I'm not, mm -hmm. I was never necessarily like a huge fan of franchise leagues, but they're here now. Yeah. And so it's crazy. And this is also why you podcast with a partner, because when you talk about these things, it's impossible to mention every single little bitty thing. Like you said, I mean, we talked about months ago, the potential split, so it seems, of Optic mm -hmm. and NRG. They currently hold both one single Call of Duty spot. How does this impact those <laughs> negotiations of Hector trying to buy back the spot with his uh, with his funding, his investors from Andy Miller? How does that like? And if you're Andy Miller, you're like, well, we paid a we paid the price initially, right. and it, it might not be worth the same, but we want at least our money back. But now Hex is like, well, maybe we'll ma like wait just a little while and see if it goes away. <laughs> I, and, and then it, I mean, you can go as far, and again, we'll probably end this topic because you can go as far to yeah. say that Call of Duty League literally needs optic. Yeah. So. Uh, Hex has some leverage there. Right. I mean, if if I'm Hex and I, God knows what he's doing behind the scenes, right? I mean, if you can't buy it back, Call of Duty League literally needs Optic, which is crazy. I, I'm not not to say that Call of Duty League wouldn't love to cut you off if you're not willing yeah. to pay, but man, I I got to imagine those kind of behind the scenes talks are hectic as ever. So, what do you guys think the future of the franchise leagues are going to be, especially with the ongoings of the Activision Blizzard case? It just seems to somehow get worse week by week. Now, I did not get the clip of what we're about to talk about, but I promise you it freaking happened, Didn't okay? Happen. <laughs> <laughs> we, we talked about Ninja a couple weeks back and uh, his fall in viewership, but he seems to not care. He's having a good old time. Ironically so, returning back to Fortnite the day that his new movie, Free Guy, oh, I shouldn't say his movie, he's making a cameo in Ryan Reynolds' movie. Ninja's movie with Ryan Reynolds also in it. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Reynolds makes a huge cameo throughout most of the movie. Uh, it's actually the same day he returned to Fortnite and he's back to 20K plus viewers. So uh, kind of continuing to prove that if he really wanted viewership, he could just go back and, yeah. and play that game. But besides that, it was during the stream. And again, he's taken away VODs and the ability to clip. And I, I, I don't have money to subscribe, but he actually went on to talk about Doc and his brand new game, the Vertical Battle Royale that we have mm -hmm. talked about. And this past week, his brand new gaming studio, which Ninja went on to talk about the irony of Dr. Disrespect starting his own game, which I, I think you understand the irony there. I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to get it. I, like, no, man, man, you know, maybe, 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 I don't, I don't know if I understand the irony there, yes, you but do. It, I assume it would have something to do with the fact that Doc is so critical of other games, yeah? And so, <laughs> therefore, like, I mean, this has to be the perfect game, yes. you would assume, and it would be funny, I mean, how would this affect 
even reaching here, his relationships with other streamers who say Ninja or Tim is playing the game or Nick Burks is playing. So and they're like, this is such garbage and just get pissed <laughs> off at it. And Doc's like, <clears throat> sorry, guys. <laughs> and then you even mentioned, because I, I said you knew the irony because you mentioned in our Respawn recap, like Doc playing his own game and Rage quitting his own. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're right. This game sucks. It has to have the perfect. I mean, we've seen him rage about footsteps so many times. So the audio in the game has to be perfect and it has to be something different oh, is ultimately there, what i'm expecting there can't be shields because he hates oh yeah Apex no shields <laughs> yeah it has to be a pretty quick uh time to kill probably and require a lot of skill but also everyone has to be able to play it i don't know what to expect from this but but kind of like PUBG or something he actually likes but yeah. either way also ninja meant this like wholeheartedly in a, in a funny way because doc is very well known for criticizing every single game he plays which you almost set yourself up for the perfect scenario with a doc game if it does ever come out but also the worst case scenario so and we've never seen this before we've never seen a creator in those kind of shoes make right. a game like this where he's so well known for raging on games and now it could be one of his own so either way, you got one of the top names out there. I promise it did happen, guys. Uh, if you're a subscriber of Ninja and you want to send me the clip, you let me know. But Ninja says there's a, a sheer irony of Dr. Disrespect in his brand new Battle Royale. Will it actually come out? That is the question. A little bit of a heavier story that we did have this past week. I feel like it's difficult whenever we have to cover these kind of stories, but we always do for obvious reasons. We had Scuff Gaming, who had some allegations. If you don't know who Scuff is, I was surprised. I saw some comments on the video saying, who's Scuff Gaming? I've never heard of them. Well, they make controllers. Uh, they make a lot of competitive controllers. A lot of streamers are partnered with them, actually, as well as teams come out with them. And so we had a uh, lady come forward with her own allegations in the workplace against Scuff Gaming. I'm going to read out some of them just because there was about five different specific allegations that came out. And so they included forced back rubs and gropings, invasion of privacy, bosses speaking to other employees as well as each other about who would sleep with her first and requests not to speak with the HR department. So that was like, hey, avoid the HR department. We don't want the headache of having to deal with this, but then them not really helping the situation anyways. And ever since you had published about this story, both Scuff had their response uh, about this. And I believe there's an internal looking into it. So right. it seems about this case. And uh, the the accuser uh, has also made another, another lengthy statement about backing her claims mm -hmm. and having witnesses for them. She made sure to make clear that she's not looking for reparations. She's not looking to be paid for this simply uh, to put these out there so people know her story of what supposedly went on with her time at Scuff. And I'll say, I feel like the bigger picture here is that this, and the reason why we report on specific situations like this in the gaming industry is because it signals a lot of problems with the structural kind of industry that we have of, okay, well, this is someone who had was so excited for this job, for an opportunity to work in the gaming industry. I totally understand that, to work at Scuff Gaming, and then she faced these issues and then went to her bosses, <clears throat> but the bosses were scared of getting heat too because they didn't want their department in trouble, and so she went to HR, and HR didn't really make it a big deal because they didn't want the company to be in trouble, and then she makes a statement, and of course, they finally respond and say, now we're aware of them, and we'll respond to the allegations, which is its own investigation, like you said. But I think that signals a lot of issues in the gaming industry, and uh, hopefully they will get fixed. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you always got to be uh, thankful people can speak up. I'm sure it takes a lot. And this all comes around the back of Activision Blizzard ongoing, so it did garner even more traction. I don't know where you go from here if you're Scuff and what you find in these kind of investigations, right. because if she does cooperate, uh, uh, she says she has witnesses, so... If they issue out punishments, then so be it. We'll cover it for all of you guys. But some pretty severe accusations going towards Scuff way, and we'll see how Scuff does respond. Very lastly, for all you gamers out there and some Counter-Strike fans, what's up? Uh, all six of you. I wish there were some more of you. We're talking about one of the more popular CSGO streamers and pros in the space. That being Xanteris, at the point of us recording, has just left his contract with Big. So best of luck to his future plans, which will not be on Twitch either. We talked about this uh, over a month ago where he was permanently banned by Twitch and not given a reason, apparently not communicated via email, and they would not respond or um, communicate with him whatsoever as to what the reason was, which is just, it's, I want to say it's shocking, but at this point, he's now announced he will be switching platforms, and I can confirm that he has still apparently not been given a reason. 
Do you know what platform he's going to? Does he know what platform? Not yet. Officially, Not yet. Okay. you'd have to imagine it'd be YouTube. Okay. And I also wonder, is Facebook, are they reaching out? Or like at that point, you get perma banned and you're someone who's known. Do you immediately reach out to these platforms and say, hey, guys, they banned me. Do you have a contract for me? The really sucky part for someone like Zantares, and I believe he's actually Turkish. So English, not his primary language, mm -hmm. but has a large following. But it makes, I mean, really getting his point across a bit more difficult yeah. because, I mean, I, I want to know details. I want to know exact details. I would have to imagine it really sucks because he was a top five streamer in the CSGO category on okay. Twitch. You are permanently banning this person without us knowing a reason at a time where he really had some traction going. Uh, and what you do is you play uh, pub matches or face it as a CSGO pro with other big names. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, all of a sudden, if you to switch to YouTube, you remember he's permanently banned on Twitch. Yeah, you can't play with him. Yes, there are so many other CSGO streamers like The Simples and a lot of top names out there that go back to visit the game mm. that he can't play with now, which... I, I want to keep talking about it. I wish more people really, really dove into this one as well. But it's so weird that we have these permanently banned streamers. Ironically, Twitch now announcing this past week. I was week. about to say that. Yeah, go for it. I just, it's so ironic that Twitch announced that they were going to be giving reasons for suspensions as well as the specific stream that it was from. But now we still have, you know, the Dr. Disrespects the world. Now that Zantaris, <clears throat> who doesn't get a reason for a perma ban. And so it's like, man, why not? Why wouldn't you give me a reason for permanently booting me off the platform and not being able to play with other people. And they've also been known in the past, I believe it was uh, NRG, former NRG Shanks. Mm. He was also permanently banned and people thought they knew the reason. He claims he was never given the reason, but he was given a permanent ban. And then months down the road after his permanent ban, they were just like, hey, you can come back now. It's like, uh, what, yeah. what's going So we never get to know. And again, I understand that Twitch can't post every reason for everybody. And every Twitch streamer is probably going to deny knowing that reason because yeah. they're going to play their part. But it's so odd, the timing of all of this. So right. hopefully Zantar has just figured out, I would say pretty poor timing for him. But whatever his next platform is, uh, I hope he does finally get some communication from Twitch on why they permanently banned him. Yes, per usual. We hope you guys all enjoyed the Esports Rewind podcast. That was a pretty freaking good one. That was. that We had a lot to talk about in that we one. We talked, talked, talked. I know. It just kept going, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Maybe in the future we'll also end episodes by reading like a couple other comments because if you guys keep commenting, I feel like we probably should. Yeah, if we have enough. For sure. Which so keep commenting yes, and then we will. <laughs> we definitely did last time. Thank you all for leaving comments. Thank you all for leaving likes and following the channel and the Esports Rewind podcast. As per usual, we'll catch you back here next week. Same time. All right. Bye. Bye.